Very sunny day. I'm getting ready to leave. I gotta go to my office, but I need to open this. Oh, it's not so bad in here. It's like 65 Fahrenheit, 20 Celsius. With it being super sunny though, I don't want my little baby angels to suffer. We have to go downtown to my office. I've got to record a podcast this morning, but I'm making a stop. I'm on the hunt for something. And today's the last day I can find it before they switch out to next week's newspaper. I think I know where to go, but I'm not 100% sure. I need to go find a copy of this week's newspaper. Stop two. One of the beautiful things about an 1100 foot driveway is being able to pass by my lovely farm every time I leave, take a look at everything. One of the drawbacks of taking a look at everything is I almost never make it from my house and out the driveway without having to stop for at least one thing. Bosco! Bosco! You punk! He's just sunbathing. I assumed he was, but I don't want to worry about it. When ruminant animals lay flat on their side, it can be that they're enjoying the sun. It can be that they're dead. <laughs> so Alpacas, people always say, if your alpaca's laying on its side, it's probably dead. It's not, they sunbathe. I, and personality-wise, like two of my alpacas very rarely sunbathe, one does it a lot. And horses don't typically lay on their side. Like, that's not something that you really want to see. Bosco loves laying on his side. And he looks dead. Goats are the same. Like, it's an alarming thing to see a goat laying on their side. And they mostly, I can't even say mostly because they do it, but a lot of goats will hardly ever lay on their side. Let me put it that way. But like Maggie, I had a goat named Maggie. My friend Amanda has her now. And that goat loved just lay flat in the sun. I can't tell you how many times I ran out my front door hollering her name. And eventually, I know that they do that. I know that Bosco lays on his side. But when I see him there and I'm driving down the driveway and he's laid on his side looking like a dead horse. And I'm... And I'm just go to the office, Jess. Just go record your podcast. And I'm like, I can't. I'll be worrying the whole time that Bosco's dead. I'll be thinking that your boss is going to call me and tell me that Bosco's dead. So I have to go holler his name. He sits up. I ruin his nap. But now I can go look for my newspaper and make my podcast in peace. We always just open a coffee business in town. So. Okay. One, two, one, three. Yes, ma'am. We got him up here. All right, here it is, guys. Front page. So I met Tanya, the reporter for the Twin City News down at Beulah a couple weeks ago into this interview, and she did a really lovely write-up on Beulah, kind of giving an idea to our community of what we're doing. And I think it's only fitting that we're here on the front page of the Batesburg Leesville newspaper first. I've actually got some more interviews coming up for some other local area publications, so that's pretty cool. I just wanted to get a few copies of this so we can keep all of the press clippings for our business. How exciting is that? Oh, just gets me. It just feels so real. The roastery is right around the corner from my office. I'm gonna stop by and give Daniel a copy of this paper. Stop, homie. How are you doing? That is epic. <laughs> That's oh pretty my good, huh? Gosh. Oh, it smells like the Lord in here. Have you been sample roasting this morning? No, I did yesterday. Uh oh. It's a little chilly in here. I guess that door was just open. We did it before. It's cold outside. Yeah, so, what are you working on today? Social media stuff? Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna shoot a video teaching people how to do an air press. Nice. Took some cool photos of tea. So nice. Nice. I wanna see something really cool. When we got this building, the day we closed on, because we have the other building too, and this one, and this was storage. Like this whole thing was completely gutted, drop ceiling, like it, we, there was nothing in here. This was a burger place in like the 50s or 60s. And then it's been for 25 years, it's been storage for the hardware store that which we also purchased. And we came in and there was one thing in this building and it was this uh, old license plate from 98. And 
BLH, which is BLH. I thought that was cool. We kept it and put it on the wall. And it, and it has the Carolina Wren and Jasmine, which we put in the branding for Carolina Homestead Exchange. So it's pretty cool. I rather like that. <laughs> See ya. See ya. What's up? Welcome back to the Roots and Refuge podcast. I'm your host, Jessica Sowards. My friends call me Jess, and I hope you will too. And here on my podcast, we talk about all things homesteading, growing food by gardening, raising animals, preserving it, preparing it, enjoying it, sharing it, as well as just trying to live a little more mindfully in relationship with each other and with the earth. Today, I want to talk a little bit about a topic that I think about a lot. It's not something that I necessarily have points to make or anything to prove, just something that I am often pondering as a modern homesteader that is also living in a modern world. I, I think that when we talk about modern homesteading, sometimes that can lead to the idea that we must completely disconnect from the world that we live in. And that's not always feasible, especially when you have relationships and children that are involved in communities and hobbies and different things like that. A lot of times what we're actually faced with is the need for balance between the homestead and what happens there and the rest of our lives. All right, y'all, the podcast is done, which makes me glad. I actually have to hang out at my office for just a little bit longer. I'm waiting on a delivery, so I have to be here for another 30, 40 minutes, something like that. And the last several times I've been up here, I've just been in and out. I haven't had like a, a solid chunk of time and I have some organization I need to do, so. I'm gonna use the time that I have to be here with nothing else to get those things done. And I am already off to a bad start with my little ADD straightening up session because I have a bunch of seeds up here and man, they're calling to me. I wanna get in those. That's gonna be my reward. Does anyone else do that whenever you like need to do chores you don't wanna do and there's something you want to do and you just put it towards the end and you're like, okay, self. <laughs> If you do the things you don't want to do, you can then reward yourself with the thing you want to do. <laughs> I try, okay? I'm not saying that I succeed at that every time. I got a cricket for Christmas. That was my Christmas gift. And I have exactly zero space in my house for anything like that. Which, I, for a while, there have been a few things. Like, I, I really, I've wanted a cricket for a long time, but I'm like, where would I keep it? I don't have any space. And then, also, I have a spinning wheel. And it has been on my list. Of course, I don't have a lot of spare time to do a lot of things. And right now, what spare time I do have has been going to tasks like crocheting. Of course, I cook a lot. I have hobbies. But I really want to learn to spin. And I'll show you that in a second. I just had this like aha light bulb moment a couple, like a month and a half ago around Christmas time that I was like, oh yeah, I have like this whole space. It's fine. I can put whatever I want there. Sometimes I forget I'm the boss. <laughs> it's like I think of this as being Michaela's space because Michaela ships the stickers. <laughs> but I can totally use the office to keep my crafting stuff. <laughs> I really would like to learn to use the Cricut well. I have like played with it a little bit, not very successfully. The things that I've done have not turned out great, but I'll get the hang of it. If you have any resources that you really enjoy, if you have a Cricut and you learned how to use one, would you please like leave me links? I've always really struggled when I don't have a whole lot of time to do something or learn something new. And then I'm trying to find good sources to learn. And then I click on 15 different bad videos that really are scattered or too long and they don't tell me what I need. I get really frustrated. It really fuels me to try to make better content. Oh, so this is random stuff that I brought from my house. 
and things like this was I'm supposed to send this to my friend Peter's daughter who's now a year old. I bought this for her as a gift. <laughs> oh my goodness. And there are things in this basket that weren't really supposed to come from the house. This ended up getting thrown in there. This is uh, one of the boys' little plushies from Toby Dog. My friend Morgan Gold uh, wrote a book. I wrote the forward in it and recorded it for the audiobook. And it's so good. And he sent this little plushie of Toby Dog for my boys. So that's got to go back to the house. Uh, here are some bits of art that have been given to me by viewers over the years um, that they either made or found. And, oh, this is one, one of my boys made this, obviously. Um, look at this, this is incredible. And I've saved them all, especially places that I don't necessarily have a place to put them. But one day when we open the Beulah Coffee House, I plan on decorating it um, with all the art that I've collected over the years for my viewers because it's so special to me. And this is a paint by number that I bought for myself because it has these yellow Adirondack chairs. I've had this for a year or two with no time. So I'm gonna put it down in my office where I'll imagine one day I'll have enough time here to do it. Here's my beautiful spinning wheel. Isn't this gorgeous? This was sent to me, it's the Heavenly Hand Spinning. I cannot remember the name of this one. I've got it somewhere. This was sent to me by a viewer that had it and she used to spin and she would you know was at a point where she wasn't able to do it anymore and she sent this to me and i've done some that's what this is which i'm going to empty this fiber into that basket so i've got several different little skeins of fiber here that are so beautiful and now that i've actually been doing a lot of crocheting i appreciate this even more than i did well i knew how to crochet when i first had the idea of spinning whenever we got our alpacas um i i i had crocheted a good deal in high school but it was always very basic stuff i'd never done much patterns or working with different size yarns it was very basic and i wanted to spin but i really didn't have a great idea of what I would do with the yarn. I just figured at some point I would learn how to use it. Well now that I actually really appreciate great yarns and actually know a lot more about what to do with them and I make a lot of different things. It's kind of put a little fresh fire underneath me to learn how to do stuff like this. You want to know what I love about fiber arts? Everything is so soft and squishy and lovely. <laughs> Right after Christmas at, I think it was Michael's that I got this, I bought this little craft Charlie, maybe it was at Joanne, one of the big craft stores. Um, and I bought this on sale for 20 something dollars, I think, to put down here in my office. Cause I knew I was gonna put the craft stuff down here and I wanted a way to organize it. Oh good, it comes with the tools I need to put it together. Almost just threw their instructions right in the trash little revealing about the way I choose to look like. <laughs> to check myself because I will be like oh a puzzle <laughs> don't make things harder for yourself y'all I live in a really small town and so when I needed a space for my office, it's not like there was a ton of options. And we called a, a local lady we'd made a connection with. She owns properties. And we said, hey, do you have anything for rent? She had this space really close to our businesses. And we were like, that's perfect. And I was like, I'm going to record all my podcasts here. And I do. But there are often significant pauses on my podcast, but I have, to, I have to just stop and wait. That was a really short train, but there have been some that have come through that I feel like I've sat here for 10 minutes waiting to start recording again. Three hours later. I'm just kidding. This only took like 20 minutes. I did break a sweat though. I gotta get back into shape or else this garden season is going to hand me my tail in a harvesting basket. I can already tell you. In my defense, it was cold in here when I came in, so I kicked the heat on and it works really well. So it was a, it was a mixture of things. It wasn't just assembling this shelf that caused me to sweat profusely. It was, it was the heater also. 
I still should probably get back into a routine with lifting before the demands of the season come calling for me. All right, here's my cute little shelf. Easy to put together. Ooh, extra hardware. Makes me super nervous. I'm gonna put these in here instead so I can see them. Here's one of the yarns I had spun previously. Um, it's very inconsistent, so I'm still very much a beginner at that. All right, I'm gonna finish the last few things tidying up here, get the trash together, and I'm gonna take this tote home that I had in here because um, I need that in my greenhouse. I was gonna use it to store fertilizers and stuff. I didn't even go through my seeds. I gotta go pick my kids up from school. See, but I got done what I intended to get done, and next time, that could be the first task I do. Well, darlings, thank you for hanging out with me today. I'm about to go back out on this very cold day and go get my babies from school. Really appreciate you guys encouraging me to show the not garden stuff and the not homestead stuff. So much of my life is days like today where I feel like I'm just running around and they don't feel particularly like productive days. But you know, when you're hanging out with a friend, you don't necessarily have to be productive. Some of my favorite times that I spend with my friends is when we like go to the grocery store together, go to Costco together and do the things we have to do together. And I really kind of just realized that I get to share that perspective with you guys and it's really special for me. So thank you for hanging out with me today and all the days you do. I bless you. Until next time.